ever wonder what happened to those artists who seemed destined for superstardom, only not to fulfill their potential. In this video, we'll do a deep dive into the careers of five artists that wasted their potential. And we will start with Jojo. By age 12, after she competed on the TV show America's Most Talented Kids, she landed a record deal and released her debut single Leave Get Out, which became a big hit and she became the youngest artist to top the US charts at the time. Her self-titled debut album also did well, being certified platinum and reaching the top 10 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. Jojo continued her success into acting, starring in movies like Aquamarine and RV in 2006. That same year, she released her second album, The High Road, which debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. The album's lead single, Too Little Too Late, was a big hit, breaking a record for the biggest jump into the top 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. Despite the success of the album's first single, the following singles did not perform well. By late 2007, she was planning her third album and wanted to show her growth as a musician. But she was stuck in a legal battle with her record label, so her third album was shelved. To keep her fans engaged, she released mixtapes and singles throughout 2010 to 2012. After a legal battle with her old label, she was finally released from her contract in 2014 and signed with Atlantic Records. She then released a few EPs and went on tour in the following years. Her third album, Mad Love, was released in 2016 and did decent commercially. However, she left Atlantic in 2017 and started her own music venture, Clover Music. In 2018, she re-recorded her first two albums and released them under her own label on some Taylor Swift shit. She then released her fourth album, Good To Know, in 2020 and followed it up with a holiday album, December Baby later that year. She also participated in the season 5 of The Masked Singer and released her 6th studio album trying not to think about it in 2021. Jojo was a child star that couldn't sustain her hype because of record label problems that sidelined her for a decade. We can only imagine what she would have been if that didn't happen. Jennifer Hudson Jennifer grew up influenced by gospel and soul singers like Whitney Houston. She started performing in church choirs and community theater at a young age. After a brief stint at college, she signed with a local record label, but was later released in order to compete on American Idol in 2004. She impressed the audience on American Idol. She even received the most votes at one point. However, her elimination during the top seven remains a surprising moment for fans, with some ranking her as one of the TV show's greatest contestants ever. After American Idol, she landed her acting debut as Effie White in the movie adaptation of Dreamgirls. She even won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for this role. In 2008, she released her first album, Jennifer Hudson, which reached number two on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. After achieving a significant weight loss, she became the spokesperson for Weight Watchers. In 2011, she released her second album, I Remember Me, which debuted at number 2 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. The album's lead single, Where You At, reached number 10 on the Billboard Hot R&B and Hip Hop Songs chart. Her tribute to Whitney Houston at the Grammy Awards is still legendary. In September 2014, her third album, j Hud, came out, which was more upbeat than her previous work. In 2015, she made her Broadway debut in the color purple and received critical acclaim for her performance. She even won a Grammy Award for Best Musical Theater Album for her work in the play. Her career kept flourishing. She also became a coach on the UK and US versions of The Voice. Winning a season on the UK version, she is one of the few artists to achieve EGOT status as she won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar and a Tony. She is very successful in the entertainment industry, but she could have been the successor to Whitney Houston's crown. That just didn't happen. Tinashe Tinashe's father was a Zimbabwean immigrant, while her mother was of Scandinavian descent. The family moved to Los Angeles when Tinashe was eight. She showed interest in performing arts from a young age, starting dance classes at age four. Before starting her solo music career, she acted in various TV shows and movies throughout her childhood. She even landed a role on Two and a Half Men. In addition to acting, she was also part of a girl group called The Stunners. The group had a few singles and music videos, and even opened for Justin Bieber on tour. However, the group disbanded in 2011, 
which led to Nashe to pursue her solo career. She then released a series of mixtapes to launch her solo music career. Her first mixtape, In Case We Die, came out in 2012 and was well received by critics. She followed this up with Reverie later that same year. These mixtapes led to a record deal with RCA Records. In 2013, she released her third mixtape, Blackwater, and in 2014, Tinashe released her debut album Aquarius. The album's lead single to On featuring Schoolboy Q did well on the charts, reaching number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100. Aquarius itself debuted at number 17 on the Billboard 200 albums chart and was well received by fans. Then Tinashe started promoting her upcoming album Joyride throughout 2015 and 2016. Despite all this promotion, the official release of Joyride was delayed. She finally released the first single, No Drama, featuring Offset in January of 2018. The album was finally released in April 2018. In 2019, she left her record label RCA and gained back creative control over her music. Shortly after, she signed a new deal with Rock Nation and released her first independent album, Songs For You. In 2021, she released her critically acclaimed fifth album, 333, after dropping a series of singles including Pasadena and Bouncin. In 2023, she released her sixth studio album, BB Angel, after teasing it with singles like Talk To Me Nice and Needs. It did not perform commercially, but it was critically acclaimed. Tinashe's road to pop superstardom was cut short, but these days he is an underground pop darling. FKA Twigs Despite starting out at 16 making music, Twigs actually began her career at 17, moving to London to be a dancer. In 2012, she got her big break with a magazine cover, but her name itself has an interesting story. She was originally known as Just Twigs because of her noisy joints. He added FKA when another act had the same name. While many think it means formerly known as, FKA Twigs herself says it's just a collection of letters she liked. She started her music career strong in 2012, releasing her debut EP, EP1, with the music videos quickly gaining traction. By the end of 2013, she had released another critically acclaimed EP, EP2, with a major record label, which landed her spots on the once to watch lists from influential publications. Her debut album, LP1, came out in August 2014 to critical acclaim, landing on several best of lists. She embarked on a world tour to support the album. Then she released another critically acclaimed EP with several self-directed videos. She also did endorsement deals with Nike and Apple. After a three-year hiatus, she burst back onto the scene in 2019, releasing her single Cellophane. This was the lead-up to her highly anticipated second album. Magdalene arrived in November 2019 to critical praise. Some call it the best of the decade. Then she kept building momentum in 2020. In 2021, she released new music with the single Tears in the Club featuring The Weeknd. This song was the official lead-in to her mixtape Capri Songs, which came out in January 2022. The mixtape was well received by critics. Unfortunately, in October of 2023, a leak of a large number of her demos forced her to delay her album. It's unclear when it's going to drop. FKA Twigs is a very creative and critically acclaimed artist, and it's the public that needs to catch up for her to become a bona fide star. Tori Kelly Tori found success early on through singing competitions like America's Most Talented Kids, which she won. After a failed record deal, she turned to YouTube as she began posting videos in 2007, showcasing her talent with covers and original music, eventually building a large fan base. Despite not making it far on American Idol, she kept building her music career. She released a successful independent EP, Handmade Songs by Tori Kelly, and gained recognition through YouTube covers and performances. This led to her signing with Capitol Records, releasing another well-received EP, Forward, and opening for established artists like Ed Sheeran. Then her debut album, Unbreakable Smile, came out in 2015 and was a success, reaching number two on the charts, selling 75,000 Amukavili units in its first week. It included the hit single, Nobody Love. In 2016, she voiced a character in the movie Sync. In 2018, she released her gospel-influenced album, Hiding Place, which won her a Grammy. It led to a big tour. In 2019, she released another album, inspired by two events, 
with a new single, Change Your Mind. Despite the pandemic cutting her tour short, Tori stayed busy in 2020. She released an EP with original songs written in quarantine and put out a Christmas album. She also competed on the TV show The Masked Singer. Tori Kelly was back with new music in 2023. After performing with Andrea Bocelli, she signed with a new record label and released the song Missing You, inspired by the 90s and early 2000s R&B and hip hop, which fits her sound. It's the first test to her upcoming fourth EP, Tori. She had every element for becoming a pop star, but that never seemed to happen. Which artists did I miss? Tell me in the comments below.